How y'all doing? Long time no see, huh? Man, well, how y'all been doing? Y'all leave me some comments. Um, oh my goodness, I've been getting so many messages lately. Um, and so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do a video. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick video and just talk about it. Because um, a lot of times this stuff, it don't be playing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll just be sitting going through my messages and my comments that y'all send me. And I'm like, okay, this seems like something that people want to hear about uh, needs to be addressed. So anyway, this video is about Christian women and dating. Um, I would do one about men, but I don't really know what to tell y'all. <laughs> um, I guess it's the same thing would apply, but I've been noticing lately in like, you know, me and um, a sister of Christ of mine, actually, you know my homegirl, the one y'all met, we thinking about going ahead and like starting up, starting doing some type of seminars or something and just teaching the things that wasn't taught to us that we've learned through the years but um anyway so to make a long story short I want to give y'all some things that I use myself and have been very helpful for me um and you know just it's difficult because there is no even though there's a lot of information in the Bible like there isn't specifics to tell you how to date and be a Christian because biblically speaking biblically biblically forget it biblically speaking <laughs> um they didn't date if you look back that was more so certain um like traditional um type rituals that they had but they didn't really date even when um Ruth and Boaz and how she was told to go and lay at his feet um and you know they was having a festival and they were celebrating the harvest. So y'all know they was had some wine. I ain't finna say they was getting drunk. I ain't finna say they was wasted. So don't be saying, oh, I can't believe you said that. And you so wrong. And oh, you know, don't please do not fire me up for that. Okay. But there, so it, there really isn't any like specifics just named out and spelled straight out for us. Besides, we know the things like not being unequally yoked. But the fact of the matter is, everybody is on in a different transition and, and going through different transformations and in a different place in their walk. Everybody's walk is not going to be exactly like yours. So in the unequally yoked scripture, you're wasting a lot of time if you're looking for somebody uh, and you're expecting their walk to be uh, match up with your walk because it's just not going to happen and I didn't know that and I was like, really like seriously because of what I was being told I was just like oh well if he don't if, if he doesn't practice what I practice exactly the way I do it if he doesn't go to church as much as I do if he did all of these things I was like oh then you know he's not equally yoked but that's really not the case you just need to make sure like the foundation of what matters most is like what do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe he died and raised on the third day? Um, you know, what do you what are your beliefs about the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Uh, these are the questions, you know, that you do want to ask. And these are the things you want to know. Y'all know I keep messing with my hair, y'all know I got that bad habit. I'm working on it. But um yeah, so these are the things you want to know. Um, you know, and another thing is, I mean, if you got discernment, the Holy Spirit will guide you and speak to you. But this is the issue I've been running into is because I don't want my relationship with God to be put on the back burner because I'm personally interested in somebody. And that's an issue because anytime you're interested in somebody and you put your relationship with God on the back burner for that person, whatever it may be, it may be something simple. Let's just say, um, let's just say, for instance, he 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 doesn't believe it's necessary to fellowship. You know, he doesn't believe it's necessary to even go to church. Okay, something like that. So. That's not something where you will be like, okay, well, we can't even go out on a date. You know what I'm saying? It may be because he's working a lot. It just may simply be he had a bad experience with church hurt. So you really just have to use wisdom 
you it is not cookie cutter it's not the same for everybody you have to do what is best for you there is no perfect person there is no perfect mate trust me I try to find that person they don't exist um, but you have to find someone to get to know whose flaws and weaknesses are things that you can deal with and things that you can walk with them with and help strengthen each other through your walk um, and like I said this wasn't something that I was told or just really taught uh, another thing I've been noticing is a lot of ladies that say they're Christian and my homeboys be telling me they be like hey you know she'll say this is what she believe in but when it comes to something she won't, um, you know, or she believes and want to do it, if I'm not lining up with that, it's a problem. But then I see her, her walk isn't perfect either. So it's, it's, it's a uh, balance of mercy and it's a balance of grace. It's a balance of understanding. One, that Their weakness may not be your weakness. Their stronghold may not be your stronghold. You know, their sin that they struggle with may not be the same as yours but it doesn't mean that their sin is any worse than your sin so it's just the balance in having that wisdom the second thing I've noticed is is because a lot of women and and guys too that I've met they're kinda just they want the companionship they want the companionship and sick and tired of being lonely you get tired of being lonely like it's only so many nights that you can have a movie night by yourself before it just get, you know, you just, you want that companionship. And, you know, for me, it hasn't been, it hasn't been more so about um, the just needing something because I'm independent and I, I take care of myself. But it's just more so desiring that companionship. So, but it's so easy to get so caught up in that that you're not, you're not thinking straight. And um, I can vouch for that. But as I'm saying, you know, so you just have to make sure you use wisdom and do what's, do what's best for you. It's good if you have someone older or that's married or whatever it may be, a successful marriage, okay, not one that's failed, a successful marriage to have to just take to them and ask them certain questions. I mean, how can you learn? Now, there are people with failed marriages that have a lot of advice to offer. So I'm not saying, you know, don't take advice from them. But I'm just saying it's really good to talk to other Christians and learn things from them and their experiences. Um, let's see. And another thing, ladies, look. If the, guy, if the guy isn't willing to be patient with you and if he isn't willing to respect where you are spiritually he'll no no okay like out the gate you know this is somebody i cannot be with they, they may make a very good friend um you know they may be a good associate or someone maybe to invite to church but as far as getting serious uh, -uh that's gonna be a problem and i think what us um, ladies especially maybe men y'all can relate to this too but we get so wrapped up and I'm just oh he made me feel so good and I just be so happy and you know when he come around and I miss him and oh I just oh he gonna be my boo one day and da 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 and you get so caught up in the hype of it all and the emotion of it all have you stopped and asked God okay God well how do you feel about this is this something that that's in your will for me you know and um, you just have to be real about that get your credit right if you know I'm not saying your credit gotta be perfect but be working on these things because you don't want to come to the table as a liability you you want to have something to bring to the table and and and, and I'm noticing guys that are successful or guys that have a good job, whatever it may be, have financial stability, that security, that's what, ladies, that's what we're looking for. That was the whole purpose um, in the man being the head. And we find security in, in, in men. With that being said, if you don't have anything going on for yourself, that's going to put strain on that relationship. So try to have something going on for yourself. 
and not become totally dependent on this other person, no matter what level or where you are in the relationship. Um, you know, and going back to the security thing with late with, with women, and even for me, uh, I know that's one of my main things. Like, if you can't offer me, if you're not financially stable or nowhere even close, like, what can you do for me? You know, what, 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 I can, I will only end up enabling you or, you know, it's just, it'll end up being a problem. So I'm saying you don't have to be perfect, but make sure you have goals. You both have goals that you're going in the same direction, that you're on the same page. Like, I don't even have to take this to scriptures and biblical. A lot of this is common sense, but wisdom and using the Holy Spirit and discernment, like, that's what's going to make a successful relationship. No, I'm not married yet. No, I have never been married. But I do know when I do, it's going to be right. Because I've made all the mistakes to make. And I now know what I'm looking for. I now know what's best for me and what God wants for me. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm not even going sit up here and cry with y'all. Man, sometimes I just be like... I just want somebody to talk to. You know what I'm saying? I just want somebody to chill with. And I can sick of talking to my girlfriends. I don't, can y'all relate to that? Like, I just, you know, I love my girlfriends. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I just want to be able to have that camaraderie w with a man, with someone of the opposite sex. And so a lot of times that get us in trouble. Because men interpret things completely different than we do. We speak two different languages and think different. Uh, and so what happened in your um, fulfilling of just having that camaraderie with a man, being able to have a conversation from, with a man and get things from his perspective and to have that, just to have that, even just the, um, you know, the, the affection, not saying like, you know, y'all get freaky and saying that, but I'm just saying just having someone around and having that masculine energy around, it can be very addictive. And we have to realize, too, that we have hormones going on with the testosterone and the dopamines, all that is going on. And, um, you know, with men, it's mostly oxytocin and testosterone. And I'm not trying to get, like, scientific on y'all and with medical terminologies. But it's just, it's a chemical that's released when two people have um, any type of physical interaction with each other. It may just be sitting beside each other and you may just lay your head over on his shoulder. Uh, you know, just simple things like that. And so that can become addictive in itself and it make you think that this is the person I want to be with. But if these other things I talked about don't line up, then, you know, it just, it don't make sense to do it. So I had to do this. Christian women, don't be afraid to let a man know what you believe and what you expect out of him. Um, or just what you expect, period, and what you're looking for. Because if you don't speak up, you can't get mad at him when you get into a relationship with him. And then he's not providing for you what you need, what your needs are. If you didn't make it clear to him in the beginning. Okay? And this goes both ways. And I was watching, um, just like Love and Hip Hop and, uh, Jim Jones' new show. And I was just watching it. And it's just a very good example of the things that black women go through. And, and not even just with being Christian. Because I see more white people that are married and together. And look, I'm not racist. I love my white people. I got some in my family, you know. <laughs> you know, but. I just noticed that there's a difference. There's a cultural difference. And our culture, hip-hop, has affected the dating scene big time, okay? Now, a person's idea of an anniversary gift is a threesome. Like, hip-hop has had a really big effect, um, you know, on dating, period. And y'all cannot argue with me on this one because I, trust me, I know. I have just watched and paid attention over time and things are different. It is not like it used to be. So, and you got these shows and it makes these things more acceptable. And it makes that man feel like, okay, well, this, she, his wife is willing to go this far for him to make him happy. So it has become a way to communicate love. And so what happens, even with Abraham and Sarah, the culture affected them. In that culture, if the woman could not get pregnant, it was not... um. 
it wasn't a rare thing 